Hey folks, does this guy uh, coming to you on November the 4th? And as you can see, it's starting to stubble up. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, as you guys know, I did November this year in the hopes to raise funds and awareness for mental health, which is something that is close to my heart. And for those that have donated, we've gotten almost $300 in donations. And thank you very much for that. Um, if you haven't donated, uh, here's, here's a challenge for you. If we can get up to $5,000 in donations before the end of the month, I will be shaving the head. Yeah, I'll be adding that to the list. And I'm sure there's a few of you that would like to see this go. Yep. I'm not one of them. And there's probably a few of you that don't want to see that go. And if you are one of those people, then you can always start a GoFundMe page, you know, saving the cows here. And which... Again, any money that goes into that will then go towards Movember and mental health for more facilities and programs and awareness and all that kind of stuff. Now, today I am going to be talking about uh, defense mechanisms because defense mechanisms is something that we all we all use uh, different types of defense mechanisms. There's a lot of them, but we do all use a defense mechanism at some point in our lives. And some of them, some of them are a great way of dealing with things. Uh, some of them are more destructive than others. And hopefully, uh, by talking about some of these, uh, some of you might might find that there are some of these defense mechanisms that you're using that aren't necessarily actually good for your mental health and are going to cause problems further down the line. Now, I'm going to be uh, talking about the um, the four level system that was made by by George Valiant. And before I get into this, I will just say that this is all one take. This is no edit. Uh, this is the, giving it one go, first go. And uh, yeah, if I if I fluff it up, well, it's going to be in the video. So thankfully, I've got coffee, which is getting kind of low. I should have remade one before I got into this. But anyway, so George Valiant, um, I believe he was from the 20th century uh, psychologist, and he came up with a four level system, and in each in each level. Um, there are different types of uh, defense mechanisms within them. <coughs> now, if it does look like I'm reading something behind, like a teleprompter or that, I did make some notes because there is a bit of information here and I'd like to get the information as as actual as as possible. Now, so the first level uh, that, that George Valiant came up with is called pathological. And these mechanisms are... Uh, uh, usually defenses that permit one effectively to rearrange external experiences to eliminate the need to cope with reality. Um, pa pathological users frequently appear irrational or insane to other people. Um, but it is, that, uh, as I said, defense mechanisms. And one of the ones in the pathological uh, defense line is denial, which is straight up refusing to accept that that is happening you know refusing to accept the emotions or the anxieties or the depression just it, it's not happening it's not happening yeah it's not happening that is quite a common one that happens especially around loss of relationships or loss of loved ones uh, another one in the pathological one is distortion which is uh, pretty much grossly over overshaping their external reality to meet their internal needs so they instead of dealing with their problem they, they turn their external reality into a bit more of a fantasy so that they don't have to deal with their, their inner problems and all that kind of things going on. And it comes across quite often, uh, happens uh, most commonly with people with depression or anxiety. Now, those are two of the uh, level one pathological ones. We're going on to level two now. And uh, if, if you have uh, used any of these um, defense mechanisms in the past and haven't realized, Hopefully this is educational for you. So right, the, the second level that uh, George Valiant came up with is known as the immature. And these are usually present in adults. Uh, these mechanisms lessen distress and anxiety um, produced by threatening people or an uncomfortable reality. So usually in, in reaction to, to, yeah, like abusive people or um, not wanting to accept a, a, a reality that is going to be uncomfortable. Now, excessive use of such defences is seen as socially under, undesirable in that they are immature, difficult to deal with, and seriously out of touch with reality. Uh, these are the so-called immature defences, and overuse almost always leads to serious problems 
and and a person's ability to cope effectively because essentially this these defeat uh, defense mechanisms they're not actually dealing with the issues that that yeah trying to put, get rid of the issues or change the issues and these defenses are often seen in major depression and personality disorders now there are a few in here and there are you know th there are some that i've actually used myself uh, and the first one is acting out which is like a direct expression of an unconscious wish or impulse in action without conscious awareness of the emotion that drives the expressive behavior so that's where you're feeling angry you don't know why you're feeling angry so you act out or you're feeling sad you don't know why you're feeling sad so instead of figuring out why you're feeling sad you act out and that's one of the ones that can usually hurt other people another another one that comes underneath the level two immature defense mechanisms is passive aggressive behavior and this one is very common i mean i have used it myself as well and i have been uh, practicing my passive aggressiveness lately and it's totally fine that none of you noticed uh, yeah i know i love that joke but anyway it's it, it's characterized by a pattern of passive hostility and an avoidance of direct communication and, and where some action is socially customary as a typical passive aggressive strategy so where you you yeah you you kind of you're not directly telling them that that you're upset but you're also not not telling them that you're upset and you're doing it in a way that once again can hurt other people and make other people feel quite bad uh, then there's also projection which is where you you project your issues onto other people so that they all of a sudden it's not your issues it's them it's them it's that it's this situation it's that it's that it's not me no 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 i'd be fine if if this wasn't happening you know i'd be fine if this person wasn't wasn't being you know doing this i'd you know it, it's got nothing to do with me i didn't make myself feel this way or anything it's 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 everyone else and and that is once again, quite destructive because you're not actually dealing with the problem yourself. And then the fourth one in the uh, level two immature one is it's known as schizoid fantasy, which is a tendency to retreat into fantasy in order to resolve inner and outer conflicts. Um, and, you know, this is quite common in, uh, in the, like creative people and writers and that kind of stuff. Like, you know, it's, it's marked by an expression of certain desires through vivid mental imagery. So, you know, you could pretend that that you're a different character you can you can escape into a fantasy where you know it could be a knight that is also dealing with the same stuff as you but he deals with it in a knightly way and uh and that that can actually help you deal with stuff it's not as destructive as some of the others but it can also once again lead to where you're not quite dealing with the the issue itself you're dealing with the issue through the fantasy of of a, of a character which once again can lead to some very uh some you know things down the line now that's your level two your, your immatures your, your level three these are neurotics and these mechanisms are considered neurotic but fairly common in adults and such defenses have short-term advantages in coping but can often cause long-term problems in relationships work and enjoying life when used as one's primary style of coping with the world so they they are good if you if like you're using it very shortly and very like very rarely very shortly but they can they can work on a very temporary basis now some of the ones in the level three neurotic uh, defense mechanisms are displacement which it's an un unconscious defense mechanism where the mind substitutes either a new aim or a new object for goals felt in the original form to be dangerous or unacceptable uh it's 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 something that happens especially with people that are in abusive relationships and things like that they uh redirect emotion to a safer outlet and separate the emotion from its real object and redirect the intense emotion towards someone or something that is less offensive or threatening in order to deal directly with what is frightening or threatening them directly so it is a way of it, it's it's sort of like a projection but but instead of pr projecting everything you're you're taking like you know say you uh, you're being bullied or something like that you're taking that and then you're redirecting emotions to someone else who is less threatening and that and 
it, it can be a way to deal with things and but once again very short term and can lead to uh, if you use it all the time uh, problems with relationships um, then there's also in the level three neurotic dissociate uh, dissociation which is like a temporary drastic modification of one's personal identity or character to avoid emotional distress uh, separation or postponement of a feeling that normally would accompany a situation of thought so essentially you're, you're disassociating yourself from the situation you're disassociating your emotions uh, from like it's you it is a very temporary thing but it's a concept that has been developed over time in any wider range of experiences ranging from mild emotion, emotional detachment from the immediate surroundings to more ser uh, severe disconnection from physical and emotional experiences so you essentially yeah you, you disassociate yourself and that can lead to uh, well in a way a lack of emotions and that, that can cause again problems down the line another one in the level three neurotic is intellectualization which is a, a form of isolation i suppose you could call it which is where you're concentrating on the intellectual components of a situation so as to distance oneself from the associated anxiety provoking emotions uh, separation from, of emotions from ideas uh, and all that kind of stuff it's uh, it's been around since uh, since spock you know the whole vulcan thing about emotion and logic and they they use logic they use intellectualization so you could say in a way that the vulcan's defense mechanism is intellectualization uh it's it, 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 once again it is something that can be short term but uh by avoiding the unacceptable emotions that you don't want to accept and focusing on the intellectual aspects uh, solitude rationalization ritual uh, compensation and that uh, it can can be good for dealing with these things but then you're not actually dealing with the emotion itself and that is where the problem is uh, and another another one from the level three neurotic is repression and this is the process of attempting to repel uh, repelled desires towards pleasurable instincts caused by a threat of suffering if the desire is satisfied so the desire is moved to the unconscious in the attempt to prevent it from entering the conscious seemingly unexplainable na naivety memory lapse or lack of awareness of one's own situation and condition so the emotion is conscious but the idea behind it is absent it's been it's been pushed back so once again can be used to deal with it but if you're not dealing with the the idea behind that emotion then that once again on a long-term basis can lead to a lot of problems it's uh but it is one that a lot of people use now those are the first three levels there's one more level to go and for those that are still with us all three of you thank you for uh sticking around we've only got one more level to go all right so the level four of uh defense mechanisms this one's called mature these are commonly found among emotionally healthy adults and are considered mature even though they have their origins in an immature state of development uh, they are con uh, conscious processes adapted through the years in order to optimize success in human society and relationships and the use of these defenses enhances pleasures and feeling of control uh, these defenses help to integrate conflicting emotions and thought while still remaining effective and those who use these me mechanisms are usually considered virtuous uh, which uh, the, some of my defenses are mostly in the mature which i never thought that i'd ever be in a mature category anyway so so some of the uh some of the defense mechanisms in the, the level four the mature is altruism which is where you go out of, out of your way to help lots of other people because and you get pleasure from that so you get your satisfaction from from helping others and that that can be quite a good uh, quite a good defense strategy because you know when you're helping other people and you know if helping other people makes you feel better then that is a good way of you know not necessarily getting like dealing with the emotion but but getting enough of another emotion that 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 other emotion isn't taking over everything so that can be quite an effective one uh, there's also anticipation which is like a realistic planning for future discomfort like if you know like co quite common if uh, you you know someone that's terminally ill and you start you know you you know that that's 
it's coming you know it's in the future and so you kind of you kind of start planning for for the emotions that are going to come when all of that happens um, another one is, uh, is is suppression which is the conscious decision to delay paying attention to a thought emotion or need in order to cope with the present reality making it possible later to access uncomfortable and distressing emotions while accepting them now this one can and can work and sometimes it can't work but essentially it's you, you make the conscious decision to to that thought that's in your head to push it to the back or the emotion in your chest to push it to the back so that you can cope with what's in front of you right there and then so that then when when you're in a in a in a space say back at home sipping on your tea by yourself you can you can start processing the emotions and the thoughts that were there now this last one is uh, in the level four mature category is one that I use myself which is humor and it is an expression of ideas and feelings especially the, uh, those that are unpleasant to focus on or too terrible to talk about directly and it usually gives pleasure to others uh, the thoughts do retain a portion of their innate distress but they are skirted around by witticism uh, for example self-deprecation and all that kind of stuff and as I said this is uh, my main line of defense when it comes to depression anxiety and even physical things and, and all of that I'll give you an example uh, many years ago in my mid to late teens I came off the trampoline very very badly and ended up having no feeling and not being able to move from uh, from the waist down for about 72 hours until I got feeling back and it was there was very scary and I thought that I wasn't going to be walking anymore and the thought of being in a wheelchair and I, I was trying to process all of that anyway we're in the hospital and I had my mum and my mate with me and the doctors are doing all, all, all the tests like you know pricking the bottom of the feet to see if they react doing the scraper on the bottom of the feet to see if they scrunch up I uh, used the, the proddy bit on the uh, knee hammer to poke my balls which I didn't feel, but uh, I didn't even know he was doing it, but I, I saw my mate kind of, ooh, and I was just like, oh, okay. So, yeah, definitely didn't feel that and probably should have. And it, and it wasn't until the doctor, uh, he was do he did something and he goes, like, you're definitely not feeling anything. I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, well, I've got my finger in your bum. And my, my reaction was, well, mate, I went to an all-boys Catholic school. You might want to use the thumb. But the reason he tried the finger as as a last test is because those muscles, like if there's the slightest bit of feeling, will involuntarily squeeze up because of uh, it is one of the fifty odd sphincters that we've got in our body. All right, so uh, hopefully you guys have learned something about um, these different different levels and different types of defense mechanisms. I'm I'm sure there'll be quite a lot of you out there that. If you did make it to the end, if you're one of the two people that have made it all the way to the end, you've probably realized, oh, there's a couple of these that that I, I do. And, you know, it's it, and it's perfectly fine because being human, we try to cope and we try to deal with things and we all have our own ways. And some of them are destructive. Some of them are quite good. Um, and hopefully this has let, you know, help, help with anyone out there that does use some of the more destructive um, coping mechanisms to just sort of have a look at that and and see if there's something they can do to move towards maybe one of the more less destructive ones especially the ones in the level four mature now i'm going to leave you with that because this is quite a nice big long clip now and my throat's getting sore and uh, i really need another coffee and i made it through the whole thing without uh, making too much of a fluff up so i thought that, that was good but don't forget folks it is movember if you want to donate there will be the link in the description. Uh, again, I'm going to say get up to $5,000 in donations. Yep. We'll be shaving the head. So that is a promise that is, it's it's a verbal contract right now. And if you want to have it in a, a written contract, I can do it in that and pop it up on Facebook. But anyway, folks, uh, this is my one of my Movember talks. And I hope, I hope you've all learned a, a little something about... Uh, some, some of these defense mechanisms, because like I said, we all use them because we're all human. And being human means having brains and hearts that sometimes try to fight you. But, uh, you know, sometimes you've got to try and fight back. Other times you just got to like, you know, Jackie Chan and try and get out of the way. And other times you do have to deal with them directly. 
but uh, yeah, if there's uh, in, in, well, there's probably defense mechanisms that I've completely forgotten about, and I'm sure people will let me know about them. But anyway, I'm going to make this another coffee. I'm going to uh, get myself ready for the day, and I'm going to I'm going to try and try and push more of this out because it's coming in very dry. And, uh, and you can tell that this is uh, all one take because without editing, because if it was edited, then that wouldn't have just happened. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, till next time, keep up the hoe, kia May the winds be in your favour. And remember, stay safe out there, guys. Be kind. Check in on your, check in on your mates. And, and yeah, don't be a dick. Till next time. Happy Movember.